This is the Leader Series 1000 oscilloscope and is the first candidate of the new segment on this channel, Vintage Teardown. In this series we will take a look at different old electronics. I'll try to tell you the specs, what they could do years back and then take a look inside and see the electronics. Today we'll take a look at this vintage oscilloscope. Compared with any other new digital oscilloscope this is huge as you can see, but what we have inside, for that stay tuned. Well I hope that you will find this video enjoying and if so please comment below. It's very important to me to know that, so I could make more videos like this. For a future vintage teardown I'm preparing this old black and white TV for example, so tell me if that would be interesting. But with no more introductions let's start with the first vintage teardown of this channel, so let's get started. On the Electronoops channel we have electronics projects and pretty much everything is new tech and digital. But now I had the idea of starting a new segment. Go back a few years and tear down electronics and see what we have inside and also tell you about the specs and much more. So welcome to Vintage Teardown. This episode is sponsored by GLC PCB. If you have a design and you want low cost PCB prototypes, check the services on glcpcb.com. For only $2 plus shipping you can get 5 PCBs of any color that you want. During this Chinese New Year the factory is still working and will keep producing high quality PCBs for us. The order process is very simple, select code now, upload the Gerber files of your PCB, then select your settings such as color, thickness and more. Place the order and receive the 5 boards for only $2 in just a couple of days. More services on glcpcb.com. What's up my friends, welcome back to this first vintage teardown of this channel. Today we'll take a look at this vintage 100 MHz leader oscilloscope. As you can see I don't have the entire case of this, because I found it in the dumpster of my university and it was already like this, without a case. I had to make myself a wood top part, so it would be a bit more protected. But if you wonder, yes, this thing is still working. I just had to change a few capacitors from the probe's input and then it was working with no problems. Here we have the 1 kHz testing signal for channels 1 and 2. So this is series 1000 oscilloscope from leader and it could go up to 100 MHz. If we take a look at the user manual this is called a portable oscilloscope. But nowadays we call portable devices those which are small easy to handle with just one hand or maybe even fit in your pocket. I mean yes, this is portable and if I had the original case we would also see some sort of handle that will help you to carry this around as you would do with a suitcase. It even has some rubber feet on the back, so it could stand vertically. So I guess that is why this is called portable, because you could carry it around. Anyway, that same handle as a suitcase could also be used to place the oscilloscope with an angle above the table, so it would be easier to see. So too bad I don't have the original case. Anyway, before we go inside and see the very old components, let's take a look at the front interface and I'll try to also tell you some specs of this oscilloscope. First of all this is series 1100 and is around 35 years old, or maybe a bit less. What I know is that it is from the 80s, because of the year code on the chips inside, that we will see later. I have the user manual link below if you want to give it a look. Pretty much all the drawings are handmade, but is very well explained. We have 100 MHz, 500 microvolt per division at 5 MHz, maximum speed of 5 nanoseconds per division and a lot more. On the front we have the scope screen which is 80mm height and 100mm width. The screen has a permanent grid with divisions of 1cm, and this grid is just a simple paper behind a plastic cover. We will see more about this later. On the right side we have all the controls, so let me just plug this in and power it on. And there we have our classic, vintage, green light on the screen. And yes, as you can see, when this is first powered on, it takes some time for the light to appear. There is something in this type of screens that makes me enjoy vintage devices, and I'm not sure what it is. I connect the probe to this connector here. 
This is used to calibrate the probes and will give a 1 kHz square signal output. And now as you can see, we have that signal on the screen. Below the screen we have the intensity knob. We also have the illumination knob, that will just light up some LEDs behind the screen in order to better see the grid paper. And finally we have the focus knob. We use this to focus the electrons beams on the screen and see better the lines. On the right side, on the controls, the big one is for time division control. Then we have the volts per division controls for each channel. And by the way, this is a dual channel oscilloscope, I forgot to mention that. These small knobs are for adjusting the vertical position of each channel. When using both channels at the same time, unfortunately, using a cathode ray tube screen, the colors are the same. This other small knob here is for adjusting the horizontal position. Finally, we have the knob for trigger. Now you could select different type of coupling and the trigger source can be from channel 1, channel 2 or external. As for modes, we have the normal mode, but we also have the XY mode. And remember that one year back I used this oscilloscope with an Arduino to show some text in XY mode. That is a nice XY mode to have. Ok, so there is a reason this is called Vintage Teardown. So let's open this and see the electronics inside. Ok, so there are a lot of parts, cables and integrated chips. So let's start with the big part. The cathode ray tube. I bet you already know how this work, but the main idea goes like this. We create electrons here and shoot them towards the screen. Then using some coils, we create magnetic fields and deflect those electrons to the right or to the left, or from the top to the bottom. And when the electron hits the phosphorescent screen, it will glow. And that's how we can draw shapes on these cathode rate screens. This technology is huge compared with any LCD, OLED or any other type of nowadays screens. And look at these huge resistors here. This entire board and the enclosed case below is all for controlling the cathode ray tube. Don't ever touch these parts while the oscilloscope is powered on, because this will work at high voltage. Even this tube is big, this is still pretty interesting and awesome to see, because vintage stuff is always awesome. The other big part is the transformer. This oscilloscope is for Europe, so the main input is 230 volts at 50 Hz. The transformer has a few outputs, that will go to this rectifier board. I can see two rectifiers. These full bridge rectifiers will give the DC voltage and store it in these big capacitors, so that will be the main supply for the entire oscilloscope. And on the front part we have all the electronics for the controls. As you can see, the on and off switch goes till the back of the oscilloscope where we have the supply part. That is very strange, to cross the entire oscilloscope and have the switch on the back. Anyway, other strange things are the knob controls for the voltage per division. As you can see, they are quite long. At the end of this we have a switch. And that's because these knobs also have a switch inside that could go in and out. Then we have what I think are some encoders or rotary switches. The rest of the knobs are just potentiometers. Some of these are just one rotation potentiometers but we also have some 20 rotations or using multiple outputs. And the rest are just normal switches. Ok, the main board is full of true hole resistors, capacitors, trimmers, inductors and other ICs. As you can see from the date code of the ICs, the components are from the 80s. Year 89 week 45. So we have amplifiers, multiplexers, we also have logic gates ICs, some flip flops and much more and all these ICs are in DIP format. There are no SMD components on the main board. But as you can see there are a lot of smaller PCBs that are in vertical position. These small PCBs do have SMD components and are connected with pins to the main PCB. And this is to save some space, since talking the PCBs in vertical position will occupy less. 
we have a ton of other small components filling this entire PCB. And the bottom side of the PCB has no components, so it's a single side PCB. It has tracks on the other side, so it's a double layer PCB, but no components. Well, we do have some small capacitors that I think are manually soldered on the back. Ok guys, so this was my first vintage teardown video. I hope that you had a great time. Next time I think that we will open this old black and white portable TV and see what we have here, so stay tuned for that. If you like this kind of videos, please comment below, that is important for me in order to know if I make more or not. Also give a like to this video and consider subscribing. Remember to activate the notification bell, otherwise YouTube won't recommend my videos too often. If you want to support my work, check my Patreon page as well. So thanks again and see you later guys.